Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. In today's video, I want to talk about my opinion on Mythical Champions. Um, I, I was originally planning to do this in the first video today, where we had a new video come out from Raid, which was all about uh, Mythical Champions giving us a preview. Uh, however, <laughs> that video sort of went long enough, me watching and reacting to it. It's maybe about 15 minutes long. I said, ah, you know what, I'll split this into a second video so we can dive in depth into it and uh properly break it down and you know give my thoughts on it because people are super negative people are in full-on doomer mode <laughs> right it's all doom and gloom uh raid's gonna die uh this is gonna kill the game um yeah which to me it's definitely quite silly it's not to say it's wrong it might be right it might kill the game uh but i think uh I think sort of the, the outrage and the doom and gloom is is really quite exaggerated, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's it's funny for me coming from I've been a World of Warcraft player for almost twenty years, and even from the beta of World of Warcraft, they were talking about you know any major change how it was gonna kill the game and how the game's still going. Interesting again comparison though, World of Warcraft because you've got live World of Warcraft. You also have classic World of Warcraft now as well. A lot of people prefer classic, right? For them, the changes really did kill the game. It killed the game for them. And they're back playing classic. But for me, I'm on the opposite side of the fence. I like new things. Just get my biases out of the way. I like new things. I gave classic a little go for a while, but it has a, a, approximately zero interest for me with classic WoW. I'm all about live WoW and seeing the new stuff. Couldn't care less about going back in time to the old stuff. It's zero. So, but a lot of people do maybe even more than do play the live game or maybe somewhat equal but throwing that out there right i think it's an interesting comparison but yeah constant doom and gloom in that game doesn't necessarily mean that you're wrong um you know for some of you it's going to be 100 percent right uh it's, yeah anyway look let's dive into this so these are some of the major concerns i thought i've plus one meme one here <laughs> um that uh, i've seen let's talk about the meme one first i'm sure you guys want me to comment on this one that you only like this because you're paid to play it or like you're part of the content creator program and like you're you're a shill and you're corporate it's like no i'm afraid no <laughs> i just say whatever the hell i want uh honestly for the channel i try to have i try to have a lot of integrity right i try to um give you my honest opinion on everything in a way that is as helpful as possible for you um I am not trying to, uh, you know, sell you any shit on behalf of anyone else. I'm just trying to tell you my opinion and you can take it or leave it, right? <laughs> so yeah, you can stuff that one up your arse, frankly. <laughs> uh, on top of that, I'm not paid to play Raid. I get paid for my YouTube channel by YouTube ads. So you guys watching and becoming members and all of that, uh, you guys are what pay me. Um, that's it. So for me, it's actually, it's beneficial for me for the game to do stuff well. And it's really bad if they do stuff badly because that would hurt my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I do not get paid by Plarium. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> I do get some free stuff in game, but it's, uh, it's really not much. Um, be much better off getting a, a highly paid job and just buying that stuff if you wanted. But hey, uh, let's talk about this then. So these are some of the main concerns, um, <clears throat> which I, I think there's some interesting ones in here and a lot of things to break down. Um, so first of all, two versions of this concern, uh, free to play won't get any mythical champions, uh, or then free to play won't get them all. So this is obviously the more absurd one that, oh, we're not, there's no way for us to get all of these mythical champions. No. And really there shouldn't be. I mean, it's the same with the game. Like I've been playing for almost three years and I have spent probably a good, decent chunk of money at this point. Um, but like, I'm still missing loads of regular champions. I'm certainly missing lots of void champions. Like the idea that you would get them all is just not how the game works for free to play. It just doesn't work that way. So that is obviously silly. Now, I think a much bigger concern, especially with prism shards being a thing recently, is that you won't get any mythical champions, that you'd just be completely left in the dirt. Um, so I think that's a valid concern. Um, I'm hopeful that it won't be that way, but it's hard to know for sure. I guess the bigger question would be, how many uh, should we get? I think that's an interesting question. How many mythical champions should a typical player get? For me, I would say, I think just rough idea, maybe half as many void legendaries, maybe. Half as many void legendaries. That seems a, a fairly reasonable number. 
that you know for every two void legendaries you would have you might get one mythical champion i don't i have no idea if that's what it's going to be but i could throw that out there as like a potential you know rough gist number or so maybe like one for every i don't know five or six regular legendaries maybe like that maybe let me write this in the same way <laughs> as you uh like this so one for every two void legendaries or one for every i think this would roughly speaking be a fairly uh, appropriate amount would be my guess so that they're super rare these mythicals they're super rare but when you do get them it's super hype this is something that i think raid actually does quite well though it does put a lot of people off but i think it's what's made the game so successful which is scarcity right you think about like for me i got Sifi very recently like the amount of hype for me at pulling Sifi. Why am I so hyped about that? Because number one, she's insanely strong. But number two, she's a Void Legendary. That's so hard to get, right? So when you do eventually get them, bam, it's this massive, you know, dopamine spike, as it were. And it, it changed my account. She changed up a lot of teams. So I would like to see the same sort of thing with Mythicals, for them to be super rare. Um, but that you get, like, when you pull a Mythical Champion, like, oh my gosh, this is game-changing. It switches up everything. That is what I would like to see. I'd say these numbers, roughly speaking, would be what I would like to see. We'll, we'll see how it actually ends up being. Um, yeah, so that would be that would be sort of my ballpark for what I would like. I think Prism Shards has shown an interesting problem. Uh, with Prism Shards, right, <laughs> the issue that you have is that Raid only gives away... They have, it's like they've got a budget for how much, how many resources they give away in events and tournaments every week, right? So they come in and let's say they say, okay, Flarium, hypothetically, let's make that clear, says, we will give, I don't know, like $10 of stuff per week from events. Hypothetically, that's, you know, just to make it simple. They say, we're going to give, hypothetically, $10 per week from events. Problem is, Prism Shards are up for like, only a few days and if they make them the equivalent of sacred shards like they did in the last one so they're equal basically to a sacred shard sacred shards they normally sell for about 20 dollars so they gave us about maximum about half of a prism shard pull which was ridiculous they didn't give us enough so that's a big problem how can they fix that <laughs> and make it more accessible with the the prism shards either i think one um either you uh up up the budget just give us more stuff i think that's a, a really good option for players though plarium might not like it number two would be uh lower the cost and the chances um i think that might be something they would do if i was a game designer this is what i would do uh that's sort of a win-win for everyone so instead of the prism shards being like effectively equal to an ancient shard or a sacred shard have them like i don't know divide the cost by five but then also divide your chance for getting something good by five as well, but let you roll it much more frequently. Then probably put in like an aggressive mercy system as well. So your chance goes up with every time you pull the prism shard per prism event. So, uh, you know, you're, you're coercing people into spending then, aren't you? It's like, oh, I can go get a bunch of pulls for free. Uh, each one of my pulls that I get is stacking up my chance a little bit to get something good. Ooh, if I go and I buy some prism shards now, I can keep pulling from that higher rate. And it's gonna, so that seems like a win-win to me from a Plarium design perspective. I'm surprised they haven't done it. I'm surprised they didn't do either of these. They literally put out prism stuff, said, okay, you only have a tiny amount of free prism shards and it's not even enough to do stuff. Kind of a disaster. Uh, seeing as we know with these primal shards that you will be able to just save them up as per normal, there's no time limit on it. That does mean that you will eventually, definitely get primal shards and be able to pull them. Don't know what the chances are yet. Don't know what the mercy system is going to be yet. But it does look like you should eventually get some mythical champions. Like I said, I would expect it to be not many at all, but you will get some. You will get some. Uh, another couple of concerns here that free to play or Kraken power gap widens. Hmm. This is interesting. This is definitely very interesting. So this is obviously true uh with a couple of caveats though um so if you take like an an uber kraken right an ultra kraken who has basically everything right they've got nearly all the champions at least part way uh was it empowered yeah empowered that's the one i've got no champions empowered right but they've got a bunch of champions plus ford 
Uh, they've probably got a blunt bunch plus three plus two. They've got crazy gear. They've got almost everything for an Uber Kraken, right? There's not much left for them to get by spending money in the game. They've already bought basically everything. So for them, these new mythical champions, yeah, they're going to be able to go in and buy them all and ascend and power them all and get them ascended. And yeah, the power gap is going to be absolutely ridiculously huge. But guess what? The power gap between you and an Uber Kraken right now with empowerment, I think empowerment already broke the game, right? It already broke the game. You know, like if you come in, if you wanted to try to fight these guys, um, like it's just not going to happen. And they don't even have that, that crazy. Like they've got, they don't even have the, the Taras Marishka's empowered, you know? But like, if you're coming in and you're going to try to beat them, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to be, it's not going to be practical. Like you don't have any chance, like those top 100 players. That's not super relevant. What is more interesting is if you compare it with like a low spender. Now, here's the funny thing. <laughs> what about, what about, what about a free to play versus a low spender? Hmm. What is interesting here is it will depend. It will depend on how good value the prism or not the prism, but the primal shards are and getting the mythical champions. Because if you take the low spender, let's say low spender spends let's say 50 a month right hmm. unless the mythical stuff tempts them to buy mythical shards on top of what they were spending so they increase their spending from 50 to 75 let's say to buy mythical stuff on top of it if that happens then absolutely the power gap is massively widening but if they still spend the same amount of money it really comes down to how good a value are the primal shards like does it give you a good return for progressing your account versus buying things like a forge pass or void shards or whatever anything else right and that's going to depend on how good the packs are it's one of those funny things where actually good value packs in the shop when parium sells stuff for cheap you know we go oh this is great they're selling stuff at a good deal this is fantastic for low spenders Stuff that's good for low spenders is actually bad for free to play because it widens that gap even more between a low spender and a free to play. And it doesn't really make a difference on the Krakens because they get proportionately, because they're buying everything anyway, they're getting proportionately less value out of a few small good deals per month. Um, you know, it's, it's, that's only like a drop in the bucket for what they're doing. Whereas for a low spender, you give a few good deals per month and it can massively change the impact of their spending. So yeah, it's, it's going to depend. It will depend on the value of primal shards, right? It might be that if they come in and they start spending that 50 on primal shards to get mythical champions, that the payoff is going to be worse than if they went and bought void shards. Hard to say. It's impossible to know right now. Uh, we could probably make a pretty good judgment of it when we see the actual shard chances and we get a feel for how good these champions are. But that's definitely something that has an impact. I would best that it probably will be... Mm, it's probably going to be pretty bad value at the start, but I do expect that getting more mythical champions, that they are likely to be incredibly strong, and that that will be such a big impact on the power of an account that it might be worth it. And it probably it probably will widen the power gap. Would be my guess is that even for low spenders, it's probably going to have a fairly a fairly noticeable impact. So yeah, that, I think it's definitely a concern, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, in my opinion, it's not going to be as bad probably. As empowerment i think empowerment for me is probably the worst thing that they put in where it's just it's so impactful for pay to win <laughs> like on a totally other level uh that's been probably the worst thing um but yeah i mean you can see with void legendaries for krakens it makes a huge difference right it does uh yeah so there we go um <clears throat> another big concern is making old champions obsolete this is something that i'm also i think very concerned about i think this is a really big concern i think it's a pity you know with all of the legendaries that are coming out, like for me, epic champions are becoming more and more obsolete. In fact, epics almost are obsolete on my account. I did a video recently on like my 10 epics that are like must haves for my account, but it's only really probably about 10, right? Outside of those 10 epics, most epics I just simply don't care about. And there's, I have basically all of them and I, I barely use now any of them because I've got legendaries that are better. So epics have sort of become obsolete after playing the game for about three years. For the most part, you know, there's a few in there like Ugo and Inquisitor Shamale, Royal Guard, Geomancer, that sort of stuff, which are still relevant, uh, but becoming less so. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a, 
I, I think if the game keeps going like this, yeah, for sure, that epics are going to fall off completely. It's going to be just mythical and legendary, basically, for endgame. And then possibly legendaries are going to become like epics are now, just phased out if we get loads and loads of mythicals. I wouldn't like to see that. I would prefer to see mythicals be be really rare, that they'd be super rare and it'd be like a special thing. You might have one or two. Um, and like it kind of makes a differentiation between accounts that could be quite fun. Like, oh, which mythical did you get? Oh, well, they're super OP, but they're super OP for this sort of stuff. That's what you're good at. But like me, oh, I got the other guy and he's really good for this sort of stuff. So we're good at different things. I, I get the vibe that that's not how it's going to be and that they're just sort of like the new legendaries. So I think that is definitely, I think that's definitely a bummer. I might do a poll or something in the next few days to see, would we like to see epic empowerment? I think that's something that is better than legendary empowerment. It's much more accessible. And empowering epics would help them stay a bit more relevant uh, for people. And again, because epics are so irrelevant for Krakens, you know, uh, I think it helps helps free to play and low spenders more, making epics more powerful. So that would be pretty good. Uh, I'd love to see epic empowerment, I think. But I might put up a poll and see what people think about that to try and make some of the old champions a little less obsolete. But um, there's sort of constant power creep in the game. There sort of has to be to keep it interesting. Like Taurus and Marishka are infamous for being on a totally different power level. Uh, you've got like Jorgid is on like almost a totally different level in terms of its damage output. You know, like the, the newer voids tend to be really pushing the boundaries. I mean, we've even seen... From a fairly free to play friendly thing like newt <laughs> a recent fusion he's totally bananas op it's like the best fusion of all time by a mile um but i think wukong is insanely good like wukong is nuts it's absolutely insanely op as well i think wukong is top tier and he's been given out for free so you do have that constant power creep in the game it's sort of how it works will this be a bit too extreme um Maybe. I, I have to wait and see exactly how obtainable this stuff is going to be, how long it's going to take you. Uh, but yeah, for me, I actually, like I said, I'm very much against getting them all. But, and I'm very much against getting any. I'd like to see that in between where you might get a couple and have a massive impact on your account. But yeah, that would be my, my, my vibe. What I think. What, what do you think anyway? Let me know what you think. Like I said, do I think this is going to kill the game? I think that's unlikely. Uh, could it be the first step towards that? Possibly. Um, but it's hard to know. I, I think that, you know, for people like me that like new stuff, I think it's going to be a really interesting change. I think the mechanic of flipping between their forms seems really cool, and it's going to make for some really fun strategies. Like, I'm going to love it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. I definitely think there's going to be a bunch of people that don't love it. Uh, I think the Uber Krakens, there's always going to be Uber Krakens that drop out because of it. People that have, but it's interesting, right? An Uber Kraken, someone that has bought everything basically in the game. They've basically bought the number one trophy. Boom, here's your trophy. You bought it. You are the number one. You are the best in rate because you've paid like a hundred thousand or two. I don't even know how much they spent. Two hundred thousand? I don't know. It's about you pay a lot of money. You're number one. Um, but now with mythicals, they go, okay, well, we're taking that trophy back unless you pay us another, I don't know what it's gonna be to get those mythicals, like 10 grand, 15 grand, who knows, to get them all and empower them. You gotta pay us more to keep your trophy. So there's always gonna be Uber Krakens that kind of realize what's happening and then <laughs> leave at that point. But then again, Raid doesn't care because if they're not going to spend any money, if they've already bought anything, they're now useless, right? They're as useless as a free-to-play. So might as well get rid of them. Just squeeze them for more money. And if they leave, well, they left. That's fine. Um, but we'll get some money out of some of them. I'll see you next time, guys. <laughs> Goodbye.